I literally cannot put into words what just happened. Um, Japan 2, Spain 1, and they go 2 for 2 against the European Giants. Oh, my God, dude. It is – I was just saying in the group chat, and I was just telling people at work who don't know anything about football, soccer, you name it. They don't even know the fucking sport. I was telling them, yeah, this Japan game at 1, I have a bad feeling about it because the manager's stupid. He's incompetent. He bottled it. Huge bottle job. Oh and he did the same exact damn thing that he did against Germany. Like, if you're Luis Enrique, you're like, oh, my God. I just got bamboozled again. And if you're Hansi Flick, ho- I, I, I mean, I... For no, all we got limited faults, time this video to go into yeah. Hansi Flick, but that's an L. That's a massive L on that man's resume right now. Yeah, yeah, and we don't have to, you know, berate Germany more than they're going to berate themselves. But going back to Moriasu, I mean, once again, questionable people in the lineup to start the game against Spain. They had less than 100 passes, I feel like, in the first half. While Spain maybe had like 600, 700. And uh, I was like, oh my God, they're going to concede seven. This is going to be Costa Rica 2.0. And... Once again, the Japanese boys proved me the fuck wrong. It's crazy. Dude, is it start is it time to start talking about this Japanese defense? Cuz like they've been under pressure for basically 180 minutes total. You know, basically the whole game against Germany, the entire mm-hmm. game against Spain, they can see twice. I think it's time to put some respect on this Japanese back line. Without Tomiyasu. Yeah. No Tomiyasu. They got Yoshida, the GOAT. The fucking goat back there. I texted you when he had that one Gonda spills it in like the 89th minute. I think it was a Fran Torres shot. I don't remember. I don't know. Or Marco Asensio. And then mm-hmm. Fran Torres is coming in to poke it in. Yoshida just gets a toenail on it to clear it from the box. Man's 36 years old out here. Unbelievable, dude. Just I, I think his presence, and we've said it before in past videos, that Asian teams have always had a real problem in the back, you know, especially yeah. in the sticks and especially on the back line. And having guys like Ko Itakura out there, Yoshida, even Tanaguchi, I thought, did okay. I, I mean, what I'd much rather uh, someone who's more competent, like like Tomiyasu out there, of course, you know, but I, I think you're absolutely right. It cannot be overstated enough how important the Japanese back line are to this team. And they kept them in this Spanish game because they had a lot of good chances. Yeah. No, Taniguchi, I was disturbed when I saw the lineup. I was like, Mariasi, like you said, he's he's scuffed it again. You know, with the talent that Japan has, you probably want to see as few J-League players in there as possible. But, I mean, he did his thing. He, I thought he had I, a good I, game. Yeah, no, I mean, he was solid. And, uh, you know, the first Spanish goal I thought was a howler from the defense and Gonda. But, oh, yeah, I think that's to be expected from this Japanese team now. That, uh, you know, they let one in and they have the mental resolve to, you know, pick themselves back up and uh, strive forward for success. Oh, for sure. Dude, I don't think there's another Asian team in this World Cup defensively who can sustain that amount of pressure that Japan has has put up with. I mean, I'll give a shout out to Australia for going through. I thought they had a hell of a showing. Um but they got blitzed by France and the Denmark, the Danish, they just didn't really show up this tournament. Um, it's, I just can't say enough about the the solidity of this group. And they didn't, like, Wataro Endo didn't even come in until, like, that 88th minute. Your most the heart of the prolific, defense. yeah, yeah, exactly. Your most prolific defensive midfielder didn't even play the whole fucking game. Yes. Which is insane. Those guys. And, I mean, uh, I... It was it was a great showing. I, I I mean I don't think for the people that didn't watch the full game or only watched one half, I would implore I sorry you to go you. watch both of them because it's literally night and day difference. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, but you might even be able to tell people like you could probably just watch the Germany game again because it was kind of like that. Japan were awful in the first half. Which like I don't they know were if, trash. Like I have no idea if that was 
like it's got to be part of the tactic, right? There's no way that it's not at this point because they literally did, I feel, the exact same thing against Spain. It, it, it was the Germany game plan against Spain. Maybe. And, I mean, you know, maybe it's a stretch to say that they're doing it on purpose. But once again, I think it's a European arrogance thing where they think this Asian team's going to come here. They don't know these guys at all. They're just going to pass around and do their own thing and not expect, you know, fast counters from them. And they got sliced and diced, both of them. They got sliced and diced. And... Mitoma again coming in for Nagatomo in halftime changed the game. Dude. <laughs> changed the game entirely. In I mean, the amount of times I saw Nagatomo, it, it was probably only three times in the first half bring it forward. I was like, he's going to lose it. He's literally going like half the speed of like the slowest Spanish player, mm. I feel like. He just ain't got it like that anymore. Uh, it's just, yeah. And the hair. But dude, oh, God. Well, I mean, I'll give him credit for for trying that for for a Japanese man. That is that is a risky maneuver. It does take some balls credit for, for that. sure, but I'm like, oh, holy shit, it's it's uh it's a little too much. We needed that at at like 2010 South Africa. That's when you bust that out. I think now right. it's a little, it's a little right. late. Um, and then Kubo coming off at halftime again. Thought he did. Pardon my French. Fuck all this game again. Kind of like a non-factor. I don't know how any Japanese player or, or fan could advocate for Kubo to start over Mitoma ever. There's just I, there's just no argument. And I really don't know. And I'm not going to be an expert and say that I know how he plays in La Liga if he always plays on the wing like that. I mean, maybe he's used to a more central role. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, you, you said it perfectly. Whenever Mitoma came in, that just energized. It, it was a completely different game. Like, it got spun around immediately. What did you think about Kamada this game? I feel in these group stage games, honestly, he's been kind of ghosting. I he's been ghosting agree. a bit. I don't know. I don't know if he can he can play out wide, honestly. I don't think he's got the speed. I think. Do we know who Japan's going to play in the round of 16? Croatia. So this oh, is conflicting shit. for you. That's going to be a <laughs> conflict of interest. Um, Dude, these, these midfields about to go at it, though, is going to be crazy to see. I would I would take off Maeda and put Kamada up top as the nine. Oh, so like a I false nine type? I think it's time. Yeah. Just a more central role because I, I think he gets lost out wide and he's he's never really involved in any of the play, really. Any build up mm -hmm. or, or like any finishing, which I think for a player of his caliber, especially for this Japanese team, is a, he's he's being un underused. Yeah, I agree. I don't know if he's played like that in a qualifier. We're going to have to go back and uh, check the records there, but... You and I were texting about it too. Maeda, he just, I mean, bless his heart, he's running, but not much else is happening. Yeah, which I mean, you want someone to run out there for 60 minutes, 65 minutes, or however long he, he stayed in there, which is great, but I would like to see him replicate some of his Celtic form. Yes. Should we talk about Spain momentarily? I feel like... I feel like Lu yeah. Luis Enrique kind of kind of screwed this one, dude. One, like Nico Williams getting the start. Yeah, Are you he, crazy? Yeah. And I think this was a uh as I said, Spanish arrogance, where he's all like, This is this is a game in the bag. I'm gonna play the youngsters. I mean, I think he mm -hmm. had a Balde out there as well, who he's under 20. Unbelievable. Right? Under 20, dude. I think this is like his third or fourth cap. Yeah, like I have no idea how this man is starting. And let me just cut you off there. Japan did everything attacking Balde. Everything was coming down that side. And the, the German equalizing goal, Fulkrug, Fulkrug yeah. he gets it because the cross comes in on Balde's side. Or or Musiala kind of cuts in on Balde's side. Yeah. I don't understand yeah, right how this man got the start. Enrique did what Moriasu did to Costa Rica against Japan today. Thought he could yeah. put out some bullshit, and that the talent was just going to win him, win him the game. I mean, they got they are very fortunate 
that Germany were pretty piss poor this entire tournament. Very fortunate. If Spain didn't put seven past Costa Rica, I mean, they only went by on a goal differential. You know, like yeah. that that whole game set them up to go on. Yeah. Yeah, that blowout is why they are in the knockouts. And I mean, it's why goals are important. It's why they matter. But how convincing they looked, arguably for the first three halves they played in this World Cup, smacked Costa Rica in the first half. They should have had three against Germany. They should not have tied that game. They were so much better than Germany all over the pitch. And then, you know, the first half again against Japan, they probably deserved two. Um, but man, they look so inconsistent. And they got Morocco in the round 16. That's going to be a great game. It's going to be a great game. I hope some like historical shit comes in there. Yeah. You know, the I will um I will admit, I'll be the first to admit on Deadball TV that we were dead fucking wrong with Morocco. Dead wrong, dude. Which is fine. I, I mean, I would love to be wrong, especially with African and Asian teams. I, I, I'm glad that they are making it through. I'm I'm still a little surprised that uh that they had it in them to do that, honestly. Yeah, we'll we'll do a we'll do a separate video yeah, about yeah. Morocco. But do you know if this is the first time Japan has ever won their group? I'm trying to verify that right now. Um, ever won their group? I'll have to. How many Asian teams, dude, have won their group? This has got to be. If it's not the first time, it's got to be the second time in history. Like, there's no way this this has happened before, right? Yeah, let me see. 2002, what did they do? You know, the, uh, Japan top goal scorer at the World Cup. At the World Cup Kiske ever? Honda. Mm -hmm. He's got four. 2002, when they co-hosted with Korea, they were top of the group. With seven they were top, top of the group. Okay, that was the only other World Cup that I figured either they did it or Korea did it. But... Let's see. Dude, 20... just, what a goddamn achievement, man. Yeah, both oh Korea God. and Japan were top of the group in okay. 2002. Beautiful. Love to hear it. Love to hear it. What would you say to everybody, all of our viewers, you know, both subscribers and non-subscribers who've been who've been saying we're we're fools for what we've been saying about Japan for damn over a year now? What would you say to those people who said Japan was going to get smacked in this group? I'd say you got to trust our ball knowledge moving forward. And if you have said any negative comment about Japan or that we don't know what the hell we're talking about, please comment down below in this video that you are wrong. And maybe we will consider uh, some sort of like penance program for you. You know, maybe you do a couple, uh, you know, like a couple keepy ups in the backyard or something or uh, mm. something else or. Maybe we can come up with something a little more dastardly, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Real quick, I know you don't got much more time. So it's Japan and Croatia next. What you thinking for that game right now? Given what you've seen, I think it's going to be interesting how Japan is going to look at breaking the Croatian. It's not really a low block, but it's not really it's just it's just kind of like a kind of like a hard wall back there. Like, yeah, you can expose them, but it, it it's it, it's kind of weird. I don't really know what to uh what to call Croatia's play thus far in these past three games. They've been having some problems scoring. I would say it's been kind of overwhelming. Like Let's be clear, if Lukaku was even at 10% capacity, Belgium go through and Croatia don't advance yeah. today. Like, they were they were pretty boring against Morocco. Probably should have won that game, but were barely the better side. Blitz Canada, because John Herdman called him out. And we're very, very lucky today against Belgium. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I... I don't know. It should be a good game. I'm hoping for an exciting game, but you just listed off, you know, as you said, some uh, 
very conservative, very, very boring performances from Croatia, you know? And I think that's, that's due to their lack of a, having a prolific striker up top. You know, if they had, if they had Mandzukic from last oh, yeah. World Cup, oh my oh, God. Yeah. I mean, they would have won the group. They yeah. would have won the group. If they had 2016 Mandzukic on here, that would have been a problem. Yeah. Um, but you gotta, you gotta imagine Croatia was looking at this group and they were like, give us Japan and Costa Rica instead of going up against Spain and Germany. And we'll see if that comes back to, uh, to bite them. Dude, I think Japan got a real, real chance here to go to the quarters. And how fucking awesome would that be to have Japan in the quarterfinals? I mean, that would, they could do that it, would dude. Be, that'd be insane. That would be the farthest that they've ever gone. Ever gone. Yeah. Yeah. It's just... They could do it against this aging Croatian side. I mean, while I do love could. the Croatians, um, you know, I think Modric's best years are behind him. Kovacic, you know, he's he a, a he's a he he's a, a workhorse for sure, but I he's not to the same level as uh, as as Modric was or when whenever um, I'm not even sure how many minutes he got in uh, 2018, but. Uh, yeah, I, I I think there are some glaring holes in Croatia's side, and hopefully Moriasu and the boys can uh, come up with another brilliant game plan that and leave people guessing because because I, I have no idea what they're doing because we're guessing. Yeah, we're guessing, bro. Like, who knows what Moriasu is going to do? He's going to start Kubo again, and then you and I are going to be like typing in the chat, like, "What the fuck is going on? How many times does this man have to do this?" Right. It's just. He's he's the most confusing manager in football. Like I can't think of anybody else who leaves so well, maybe Gareth Southgate, who leaves so many of their best players on the bench. Like he doesn't have a super sub. He's got like a super like like second half game plan. Where he's like, I'm gonna put in a fucking squad rotation right. I'm gonna put four guys in at halftime. And it's gonna change the game. It's not one dude. It's like he just puts in a, a new left side of the pitch. And he's like, all right, now we're gonna go. It's literally like in FIFA when you pause the game and you switch the tactic up entirely. Yes. And you just play like it, it, it's just like a completely brand new game. Yes. Yeah. So I, I don't know what to expect. I mean, dude, if they make the quarterfinals, we're going to have to do a 45 minute Moriyasu apology video. I, I'll i do it. I'm I'll do okay it too. With that. I'll do it. I'll do it too. I, I, I can't believe the fact, bro, that they beat Germany and Spain and lost to Costa Rica. That's the most Moriyasu thing ever, honestly. And we've said it before, Japan play up. And they certainly played down to Costa Rica. Um, shit. I'm excited. That's going to be such a great game. I think that, that might be Sunday's game or maybe Monday. I can't remember, but... Um, Hopefully, it's while you're down here. I just want to also say about Spain, dude. If they don't fix that play in the back, they're done against Morocco. If Unai Simon and Rodri and Pau Torres keep passing like that, they're done. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. What, like, have they just not done it enough together? It's it's very strange because every all the other nine players on the pitch can do that. Eight players. But those three nope. in particular that you called out seem to always be fucking around with the ball, like truly think, effing around with it. But the, if I remember the Euros correctly, and honestly, some of the qualifiers, this has always been a problem with Unai Simone. Like, Luis Enrique wants a goalkeeper who can play it with his feet, and that's why he's chosen Unai Simone, because apparently he's the best passer. Like, that's why De Gea is not in this team. But he looks like De Gea when he's got the ball. Like, the man has no idea what's going on. And it's like the Spanish midfielders are not dropping in and creating passing lanes for him. The fullbacks are just kind of standing still. So yeah. Unai Simón is having to fucking hit, hit the uh, opposing nine with a croqueta or something to, like, get the ball around him. And it's, I'm like, this is going to backfire eventually. And it kind of today, Japan didn't directly score off one of those, but they got close twice. And I feel like if they, if they play like that against Morocco... And Nestri's look pretty good with the pressing. I mean, their first goal today was, I mean, actually, that was that was kind of a ball over top. I'm, I think I'm conflating two games. But Morocco could catch him. And Enrique yeah. is going to look like a major dumbass for calling in all these young kids, leaving a lot of talent at home if they cannot beat Morocco in the round of 16. I just, 
Wow. That would be Pedri, a, that would be a huge L. That'd be a huge L. Okay, it, uh, one of the last things. Is this worse than Germany going out in 2018? What? Them going out in 2022? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. You think it's worse? worse? Yes. Okay, why? Why? I think 2018 was... Them bowing out of the group was kind of a... Uh, a culture shock, if you will, to try to get them to switch things up. You know, that's when um, they're like, OK, we need to reanalyze things. And I would imagine that the German Federation was like, OK, 2022, we got four years to go. Let's turn it around here. You know, let's get rid of Louvre. Let's bring in right. someone else. Flick, I guess, became available or they convinced them to uh, do this. They paid him. He's the highest paid international manager in the world. I'm not sure if you knew that. And so they paid this man to make it out of that. the groups. And this is just a huge, huge embarrassment for the entire country. I, I, I like, I, I don't know. We'll have to verify if they've ever bowed out of the group stages twice in their history in back to back consecutive world cups. I don't know. But for a powerhouse, a historical powerhouse, I, that that's just unacceptable. And every time I, I saw them play, it's it's not a talent thing. It's like a mental thing. They're like mentally fragile. It's very, very weird. Very unlike the... Uh, the it's literally un-German. German team. It's yeah. un-German of them to do this. Yeah, I completely agree. I think I was initially going to disagree with you. But now that I'm thinking about it, like Hansi Flick, dude, I've heard this man get gassed up so hard by everybody who's like a ball expert talking about he's the best manager look what he did with Bayern oh my god like Joachim Lowe that Germany was trash but like flick Germany like go flick Germany they don't play around bounce in the group stage bro third place hold that L hold that it's, L I agree a I agree. massive L huge L and <sighs> this might be a hot take I think a good amount of that maybe falls on uh who he brought Oh my god, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Dude, that that German back line is suspect. It's really suspect. And like respect to full Krug, but if he is the if he is who Germany is looking to to score goals, oh how the mighty have fallen. Yeah, and I, I mean I don't I know Werner had a good um a good qualifying run with them and was doing, you yeah. know, he's scoring goals in the nation's league and stuff, but not having anyone in the national system to be a backup to that man is crazy. And yeah. I, it's sad to say that I think Mueller should have never started any of these three games. And uh, Neuer didn't look the same as well. It looked, he, he had a couple of howlers. Yeah. I mean, you told me Germany, if they eat five in the group stage, that'd have been like uh, something. Something went drastically wrong, and it did. Yeah, that's just okay. That's crazy. All oh, right, yeah. all right. Very, very last question. If you had to highlight or shout out three Japanese players from the group stage for doing their thing, putting the team on their back, what three would you do? Three players. I've got to shout out Gonda. Honestly, Dude, even, shout out even, Gonda. even with some bad saves, he he hey, he did still... okay. He did okay today. He, he was okay, okay today. today. He did his job today. But the reason why I am shouting him out is because I feel I've seen a lot worse in between the sticks for Japan. Okay. You know. Okay, so you're saying he personally surpassed your expectations for him. Yes. Yes. Okay. That's fair. Okay. So Gonda. Gonda. Got to shout out Yoshida. You know, yeah, as Yoshida as, as we were talking about in the beginning, I think, you know, having an experienced guy on the back line who doesn't play in the J League, plays in the Bundesliga, you know, and has been there for a while at the top of his game, you know, while he's up there in age. In Europe, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just having a player who's been in Europe for a long time, 
I mean, it shows. It it, it really shows. I feel like it's it's very uh, calm and collected. It's like he's seen this before. You know, I feel some of the JU League guys are like, oh my god, I'm out of my depth. Certainly looked that way in Costa Rica. Okay, okay, but okay, so that's two. Gonda, Yoshida. Who's your third? My third. It's got to be Matoma. I love watching that dude play. Dude, he's so good. He's so freaking good. Okay. That's fair. I think I would go. I got to go Ritsu Duan, bro. I mean, he I'm had sorry. A good showing. Like, he had a good he showing. was He was damn good. And yeah. I was a little bit of a doubter. Not that I didn't think he was good, but I thought that like the Japanese fan base was overall just making him seem like he was much better than he is. I was like, all right, bro. Yeah. Maybe maybe I got turned off by Kubo because Kubo, I think, is just – I think he's a good player, but he's been super overhyped, and I don't think it's really his fault. But I think I applied that to Doan as well. But, I mean, two goals yeah. in the group stage, that is more than any Japanese fan could have ever asked from that man. So I got to give it to him. I got to give him one. I go Yoshida for sure. It's tough to not give it to Ko because I thought Itakura had a really good group stage as well. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, how how do you not give it to Mitoma? Just for like changing the game. But honestly, there's like ten. There's probably like eight players that I could shout out. But if I had to give three, it'd be those three. Um, it's hard not to. It's really hard not to. Yeah, which is surprising. I would have thought that. Japan were going to get carried by their midfield in this group stage. And the midfield was okay, but uh, poor at times, honestly. But it really wasn't. Like, that back line held held their own. And then the changes up front completely changed the dynamic of the game. So, I mean, if you're a Japanese fan or, or I don't care who you are, actually, you know, comment who your player of the group stage is for Japan down below in the comments. Um, we, we'll have more World Cup content coming for you guys. So, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like and subscribe. Follow us over on Twitter. I'll put all our social handles down. Social handles, pardon me, down below in the description of this video. Jake, anything you want to say before we dip? Let's go, Japan. Let's go, Japan, baby. All right, we'll see you on the next video.